How's it going guys? My name is Zach with the Movie Castle and today we're going to be taking a look at Tales from the Dark Side. This is Season 3, Episode 10 and this one's entitled Deliver Us From Goodness. So a bit of a, a play on words there. Uh, this is from November 30th, 1986 and is directed by Warner Shook. This episode stars Kalulani Lee, Mary Louise Wilson, Albert Macklin, Steve Vinovich, and Bill McIntyre. And the teleplay was written by series regular Julie Sobo, based on a story by Suzette Haddon Elgin. Sorry if I mispronounced any of those names. Uh, but anyway, in this episode, a woman, uh, what she says and what she thinks starts to happen in real life, and she's told by a priest that she's a saint. But the twist is here is that she wants to live a small life and doesn't want to uh, distract from her husband and daughter, and she really doesn't want to be a saint. So this really conservative mother decides to go out and be a bad person in order to be unsainted. So yeah, deliver us from goodness, she says, because she doesn't want to be a saint anymore. That's an interesting concept, kind of turning the thing on its head there. However, as I say a lot with dark side and humor, Dark side doing humor is kind of risky. I always worry whenever I see a humorous episode that we're gonna get another a case of the stubborns, which is easily Dark Side's worst episode. Some of the old timey humor really doesn't hold up. However, with this episode, it's oddly half the time. This episode, the problem is the first half. That setup half, it takes way too long, and the humor in the first half really just mostly doesn't work. And also, the idea of a mother who is, you know, very, very old school, and what she says starts to happen in real life. This first half is way, way too similar to A Serpent's Tooth, which was only a few episodes ago. And that kind of is like, oh, wait, why are we doing almost the same concept again? However, when she starts to rebel, when we start to see her steal her daughter's Bruce Springsteen shirt and try to go and raise some hell and having a list of the Ten Commandments on a big board and Xing them off one by one, to see that character transformation was legitimately funny, and most of the second half worked. It's just a shame that we took about half an episode to get there, more or less, and I really wish the setup was quicker, and more of the episode was the mom going out there trying to be a bad person, even though she doesn't really know how. It's a good concept, but yeah, it just takes a little bit too long to get here, and that first half of the episode was just... Again, repetitive of a serpent's tooth, but also a ton of old-timey humor that really doesn't hold up super well. I mean, it's just not bad. It's just kind of cringy, and it doesn't it doesn't work. Um, so yeah, overall, I have to say I liked about half this episode. Not the worst thing ever. Probably worth a watch, but not my favorite. I. I do see the potential, and I do really like the second half, though. Anyway, without further ado, let's go ahead and talk a little bit about the plot. I'm not going to be doing any major spoilers, but I do want to say my piece on a few plot points and do a little bit of analysis for this episode. No major spoilers, but some analysis. We're going to do a deeper dive, so without further ado, into the plot. We open up with a family, mom, dad, and daughter, and the dad wants to be mayor, and he's invited over a 
political manager that he hopes will take up his uh, his campaign and guide him to be the mayor of this town. However, the manager has this bit where he's constantly allergic to everything. It's a good bit of old-timey humor that just doesn't hold up. What's this innocuous thing? I'm allergic to it. Achoo, achoo. It, it's old, weird old humor that doesn't work, and the joke is so lame, like... I think a really good comedian like Bruce Campbell could have put off this could have pulled off this bit, but nah, just some guy sneezing on TV really isn't that funny. And then we get the daughter, and the daughter wants to be a baton twirler, and she's trying to show off and almost smacks the manager in the head. And it's super forced, like no one would swing that close to his head unless you were trying to hit him. And yeah, you needed to choreograph this better. It's just you see that and you're like, gee, come on, girl, just be a little freaking coordinated. I don't know. But anyway, after the daughter's performance, the mother says that she's not supportive of it because the mother has the old outdated idea that a woman should fade into the background and not seek attention. So... That's what the mother says, and that kind of puts the daughter down. And after they talk for a little bit, the mother gets a glow of light shined on her, and that draws attention to her, and everyone wonders what happens. Something's going on with the mother. And then the political manager guy looks at his food and says, I'm allergic to everything but fried chicken. Okay. Well, it does lead to this bit where the mom says, I wish we had some, and a bucket of fried chicken descends from the sky and lands right on this guy's plate. That is one of the few jokes in the first half that actually works. The setup is a little weak, but seeing a bucket of fried chicken with the red and white KFC stuff, obviously you don't see the logo, but just descending from the sky, that works. Anyway, the guy obviously flees in tear, and they don't get him as the campaign manager. The daughter's trying to talk to the mom about modern day life. She's wearing a lot of makeup. You look like Cleopatra. Poof, the daughter is dressed in Egyptian garb. But we get the daughter trying to convince the mom to be more modern. Says, so-and-so's mom has three boyfriends, and sometimes they all come over at once, which... Oh, okay, um, but concerned with what's going on because a lot of what she says starts to happen in real life, she goes to see a priest. I think they say something like they're Methodist, but this is more of a Catholic problem, which I think, okay, that's, that's a good gag there. Uh, but the priest sees a vision of her as the uh, Virgin Mary and tells her that she's a saint. And she says, I don't want to be a saint, I just want to be a mother for my daughter and uh, a wife to my husband. I don't want attention. So she decides to try to get herself unsainted. She's going to go out and I think she says something like, raise some hell. Now, after talking with the priest, throwing in that line about raising hell or something like that, the logical next step is that she's going to start worshipping the devil or something, right? That is where the gag is clearly going. She is going to start worshipping the devil, right? No, she starts worshipping Buddha, which leads to some jokes that uh, probably don't hold up for the modern audience. Um, but the, the funny bit, and, and when the episode starts to turn around, is when the daughter brings down her picture of Bruce Springsteen and says, pray to him, I sometimes do. And that was a funny bit. And that's where the episode starts to get a little more humorous and we start to see a few really good gags. You know, the big checklist, her doing something, crossing it off and trying to be a bad person, and the family sometimes flipping out, getting mad at her and saying, Oh, mother, but at the same time, I know you're doing this because you love us, but why do you have to do this? And, and some funny bits. Um, 
a joke that I really like is she's trying to do the thou shall not kill and she's squishing some cockroaches and the husband says do you think this will be enough and she goes I don't know but if it's not enough I could always go down to the neighbors and unplug the old man and that that was a really dark joke and it's dark jokes like this it's character transformation like seeing her steal her daughter's Bruce Springsteen shirt and the daughter's just like that's mine don't take it but of course thou shall not steal she's got to steal right and it does lead to a, a okay ending I, I like to see the character transformation that's really where the episode shines it's where we get a lot of the humor the ending has a good reason why uh, she needs how uh, why she can get out like a good an idea how to officially be unsainted um, and it does have a fun little twist at the end overall though the ending is just kind of okay the episode really shines in the the middle of the second act and we do get some fun stuff that does make it worth watching it's just you got to get through that first act first and a lot of the humor in there just isn't super great it's way too close to a serpent's tooth and it just I don't know the first half was a little flat but the second half makes it good so the episodes okay um, it's a good idea that just took a little too long to get there anyway uh, to everyone who's watched so far thank you for watching to everyone who's liked and subscribed, thank you. You really are helping the channel out. I'll leave a relevant playlist on the bottom. This should be my Tales from the Dark Side playlist, where you can find my review of all the past episodes, plus uh, next episode. I did the Christmas episodes a little early, and um, Seasons of Belief, Season 3, Episode 11, I've already done, although you'll have to listen to old Zach talk there and I don't know about that guy but um, if you want to see the next episode early it's already up anyway I also have a season one and two overview and the Joe Hill comic in there anyway have a good day I'll see you guys again very very soon dark side playlist on the bottom have a good day now